Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God is your brother, DJ Sam Rock, right here on the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Soul Winners with a Z dot O-R-G, also on a speaker, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, Facebook, um, iHeartRadio, iTunes, I said that already, um, TuneIn, the TuneIn app, and Deezer, um, so many ways that you could really listen to this podcast at your own convenience. But if you're here now, live listening, welcome. If this is your first time listening to the Blaze Bible Study, welcome. Um, it's your brother DJ Sam Rock. But this basically is is a 25 to 30 minute survey of the scriptures, the Word of God, the Bible, uh, in a Christian worldview. And we here at Soul Winners Ministry believe that Jesus Christ is the God man. God put flesh on himself, came to the earth, lived 33 and a half years, uh, then died for us on a cross, right, to pay this debt for our sin, and then was buried and rose again on the third day. That's what we believe here at Soul Winners with a Z.org, Sell Our Radio Network. And for those first timers, if you don't even know how you stumbled upon this podcast, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in divine appointments. So welcome. Stay tuned in. I'm going to pray for you right now. So that way we could get into this topic, which is really a challenge, which is really a challenge to me and a challenge to you. And basically, are we willing to wait? And I'll explain that after the prayer. Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity once again to read your word, to be in a place where I'm free to read your word. And to try, Lord God, my best to hear from you, to gain wisdom, understanding, and also for those listeners right now, that they will gain wisdom and understanding. I pray, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, that you will move the hearts of every single person and you will make that miraculous transplant from our thought process to our heart, Lord God. Let that be a bridge that only you could develop, only you could make, only you could build, and only you could transfer from our thought life into our heart life, and that will be a miracle. I pray, Lord God, miraculous healing over every single listener's financial breakthrough. I had your protection over my family and over everyone's family that's listening right now in the name of Jesus, and I pray this by faith, in faith, amen and amen. So we're just going to really go to ch- chapter 74 of the book of Psalms. Psalm 74. We're just going to read something there because on my app um, the other day, I got this as my scripture. So if you don't have our free, free, freemium, it's free 99, the Bible app, the Soul Winners Bible app, get it. It's free. So why not? It doesn't hurt. Um, you'll just um, have to go in it, download it. It's available for Android and for the iPhone. Download it. You could do a quick uh, spiritual assessment, so that way we know where you're at in your walk, if you're walking, and if you're not a believer, download it anyway, because that app is designed for anyone, a seeker, a believer, a atheist, any, anything. You put your information in, you be honest with the answers, right, and it'll develop a plan of reaching out to you, and you set the times that it reaches out to you. It could be two, three times a day, it could be once a week. You set the calendar so that way nobody's bombarding you with, um, you know, anything that you don't want to see or that you're not interested in. That's why I love that Bible study app, because it's absolutely free, number one. And number two, I believe is really powerful and effective. And you do it according to your schedule. So Psalm 74, this is an appeal to the devastation of the land by the enemy. I don't know about you, but I feel and I know that I'm being attacked in the spiritual realm right now. I don't know about you. You could have a, be having a rosy day. You might be a person that doesn't believe in God and you think everything excludes you, that you're outside of the realm of God, faith, and all of that. And if that's you, then I have this message is for you as well because um, outside of the scripture, I know for a fact that either you're coming out of a storm or you're going to go into a storm. There's not going to be a person At the sound of my voice, that's going to have a rosy life with no interruptions, no delays, no disappointments, no tragedy, no death, no uh, whatever the case may be. You're going to face something in life. I'm going to face something in life 
the question is, are we willing to wait for the good days? Are we willing to wait for happiness? Are we willing to wait for joy? Are we willing to wait for healing? Are we willing to wait for God? Psalm 74 is an appeal against the devastation of the land by the enemy. And it's actually a skillful song or didactic, a teaching or a reflective poem of Asaph. So verse one says, oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Have you ever feel, felt rejection? I have. And I feel it um, when I do feel it. It's in a form of like I'm trying to preach or share the gospel and people reject the message of Jesus. They reject the gospel because I really believe that people, it's not that people don't have enough evidence like atheists say. I just believe that it's not that you can't believe, it's that you won't believe because we all have free will. Either you're going to want to be with Jesus forever or you're not going to want to be with Jesus forever. So when a question ever comes up, why does a good God send people to hell? The answer to that is God doesn't send anyone to hell. As a matter of fact, the scripture says for those who do not believe right in Jesus Christ as Lord, then basically you're condemning yourself yourself already. God is not in the business of oh, picking people out and saying those people go to hell and these people are saved and that's it. You have no choice in the matter. No, we have free will. An act of love basically gives you and I a choice to choose. If we didn't have any choice, then that's not a system of love. That's a dictatorship. And I know there's arguments against what I'm saying right now, but I'm not here to argue. I'm here to read and reflect on the voice and on the mind of God, which is the word of God. Oh God, why have you rejected us forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pastor? Pasture. And I know right now the phrase, right now terminology of the younger people are like, you don't want this smoke. And I believe that's an old school term uh, when it comes to scripture. The smoke of God represented his power, his holiness, right? His otherness, his, uh, you know, the mysteries of God, of the aroma that's sent in the form of smoke and essence and onto the atmosphere, into the heavenlies. So this is the real smoke right here. You, why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? You get that? Like his own, it seems like people that are on the side of God and or people that are on both sides, people who are against God and people who are for God, God will still have this smoke against the sheep of your pasture. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old, which you have redeemed to be the tribe of your inheritance. So this is established already. So this psalmist is on point. He's like, remember us. Do you remember us? Because basically it seems like you're not there. It seems like you're not responding. It seems like how long should we wait? Basically, as this psalmist is saying, turn your footsteps quickly toward the perpetual ruins. The enemy has damaged everything within the sanctuary, everything within the sanctuary. So this is an uh, uh, SOS. This is a call of urgency. This is a, a, a call out to God to say, God, we need you now. If you've ever been in a God, we need you now situation, you know what I'm talking about. You could reflect and you could really um, resonate and you can really relate to this psalmist right now as he is saying this. In the midst of your meeting place, your enemies have roared with their battle cry. They have set up their own emblems for signs of victory. You know, people taunting in your face and saying, where's your God now? You ever experienced that? I have. Verse 5, it seems as if one had lifted up an axe in a forest of trees to set a record of destruction. And now all the carved work of the meeting place, they smash with hatchets and hammers. They have burned your sanctuary to the ground. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name. Amazing. Of your name. You know, also you could see in Deuteronomy 12, 5, uh, and reflect more what that means. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name. And the cross-reference scripture to that is Deuteronomy chapter 12, Verse five, verse number eight of Psalm 74, they said in their heart, and I'm reading out of the Amplified version. That's why it might be a little bit different than what you're reading right now. This is the Amplified version. They say in their heart, let us completely subdue them. We all have an enemy 
and he wants to completely subdue us. He wants to shut us up. He wants to shut our voices. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He's in the culture right now developing all this and trying to win people to his side. And that win is a loss for those who are on the side of the enemy. That win is a loss of souls. That that win is a a, a, a crazy, devastating loss. The win for the enemy of God is a loss of your very own soul. So be careful who you're listening to, what you're listening to, and what you believe. You know, this is a worldview, a Christian point of view. I'm reading out of the Old Testament because Christians are born-again believers who believe in the whole scripture, Old Testament and New Testament. You know, what's the, some people ask, what's the difference between the what the Jews worship the way the Jews worship Judaism and Christianity. And my answer is simple. I believe in Judaism. I just believe it's unsettled or how you call it? It's undone Christianity because they're waiting for a savior. They read the Torah and we have the savior revealed in the New Testament. So if you just read the Torah all your life, you won't see the revelation that God sent, the reflection, the image of God through the Son, Jesus the Christ. And I don't even think in certain sections of Judaism, I don't even think they're allowed to read the New Testament because they consider it uh, or, you know, another religion, you know, Christianity, another religion. And they sometimes don't allow their disciples or their pupils under the rabbi to go and venture out into these New Testament beliefs. So they have burned all the meeting places of God in the land. Can you imagine that? The Bible says that's a day that's coming that, it, you know, he re, He wrote the laws on our heart. God himself. We actually don't need the Bible, but we have it. But I'm saying we don't need to the Bible to know between right and wrong. God wrote the laws on our hearts. But we have the revelation. We have the scripture. We have the Old Testament. We have the New Testament. So why not? investigate it for yourself. You can get a Bible free. You don't have a Bible? Connect with me, DJ Sandrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. I'll send you one. Or you just download the free Bible study app on your phone. And the link will be on the details and under the podcast. But in the meantime, while we do have the revelation, while we do have the scriptures, it would be great just to read it. And try to get understanding from it. Whatever you don't understand, that's why we have the blaze. That's why we have pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets. You know, that's why we have this ministry to answer questions that people may have. Every question is a good question. There's no bad question. Uh, You know, every question is a good question. Verse 9, we do not see our symbols. There is no longer any prophet to guide us, nor does any among us know how long, oh God, how long will the adversary scoff? And that's verse 10. And I've been there. It's like, how long, God? Like people are saying that this is not going to happen. Uh, the enemy's camp comes through and, and starts mocking you. And they start making fun of your name and making fun of my God. How long, oh God, will the adversary scoff? Is the enemy to revile your name forever? Well, I believe that the, the enemy doesn't have forever. He Not on this earth, because this earth is not forever. I made a decision a long time ago to not worry about a lot of things in this life. Um, for instance, if there's a bill that's overdue, or if there's mortgage that's overdue, or I don't see a lot of money in my bank account, when I do see a lot of money... I don't worry about that anymore. I made a decision all the time because I know 100% for sure I will not be paying bills all my life because all my life is not going to be here. All eternity is on the other side of this life. So why worry? I'm not saying to be irresponsible and not pay off your debt, but I am saying don't worry about the things of this life. For instance, If you're worrying about your car, putting a lot of miles on it, I do ride share. I do Lyft and Uber, Uber and Lyft, however you want to phrase it. 
I do ride share and the car vehicles that I have is a nice vehicle and praise God, but I'm putting a lot of miles on it. The other day they asked me, how many miles you put on that? I said a lot. You don't worry about the, the car? No, I'm not attached to the car. The car is fulfilling its purpose. It's driving. It's I have passengers. We're getting to point A to point B safely in a nice way, in a convenient way, a comfortable ride. So I'm not investing my worry or my time into worrying about the mileage. Because I'll say it again. I 100% know that I will not be paying bills all my life because all my life is not here. On the other side of this life is eternity. That's forever. And I'll be with God forever according to the Christian worldview because I'm born again. Let's go again. Remove your hand from your chest. So, verse 11. Why do you withdraw your hand, even your right hand, from judging the enemy? Remove your hand from your chest and destroy them. Now, I don't know about you. I've been in places where I say, okay, God, get rid of this, these people, these enemies of mine, because this is too much. They're mocking you. They're making fun of your sanctuary. They're making fun of your people. You know, they're you know doing this, that, and the third, killing people in the name of other gods and all this. Sometimes I tell God and I ask God, even though, you know, God is God. He doesn't ha- he doesn't owe me anything. <laughs> God actually purchased us with the blood of his son and Jesus paid a debt that he did not even owe. We owed it, but God knew we couldn't satisfy that debt. So sometimes I'm, I'm the same way, you know, remove your hand from your chest and destroy them. Yet God is my king of old. Working salvation in the midst of the earth. God is still saving. God is still healing. God is still performing miracles. A lot of people say there's a scripture in here somewhere that says, you know, the miracles are done. There's no more. There's no more miracles. And some Christian believers say, yeah, it's done. When the prophets and the disciples were gone, that's it. They are out of here. And so are the miracles. But my testimony is different. Your testimony, you might have seen some miracles in my life. I, in your life, I know I've seen miracles in my life so far, especially, you know, when we've seen my, first of all, my conversion is a miracle. That's number one. When I repented, turned from my ways to God's ways, that was a miracle all by itself. The way he changed me, the way he continues to transform my way of thinking, my mindset, everything. And I still have free will and the urges to do all those things that I used to do before Jesus. That's a miracle. That he took all of that from me. Do I still struggle with sin? Of course. And so do you. Do I still struggle with um, sinful, evil desires? Yes, I do. And so do you. So I'm not saying though that's going to go away. I'm saying now I have the actual power, the Holy God Spirit, Holy Spirit God in me to actually look at these desires, look at these evil thoughts and everything and give it to him and actually say no. Look at sin face to face and say no, I don't have to. You know, before that I was a prisoner of sin. I had no way of saying no. Now I do. Praise God, right? So yet God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. You divided the Red Sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea monsters in the waters. So there must have been some big, you know, fish in the sea. You crushed the heads of Leviathan in Egypt. You gave him as food for creatures of the wilderness, you broke open fountains and streams. You dried up every flowing river. The day, verse 16, the day is yours. The night is also yours. This whole thing about, you know, God is, oh, is only up in the day. He falls asleep at night and the enemy takes over the night. That's nonsense. Don't believe anybody who tells you that. God, right? The day is yours. The day belongs to God and the night belongs to God. As a matter of fact, God has done in my life, God has done his greatest work in my darkness and night in my nighttime. God has showed up and shown his light in all my dark times. What about you? Can you testify? Verse 17, you have defined and established all the borders of the earth, the divisions of the land and sea and of the nations. You have made summer and winter. So God is the God of nature. God is the God of all the seasons. God is the God of all his people, right? God is the God of the day. 
God is the God of the night, the earth, and everything in it. Yet there's an enemy that runs the system of this world that wants to kill, steal, and destroy you and me. It doesn't matter. Check this out. God is so deceiving, so don't believe one bit that if you're a Satanist and you worship him, that you get to get a free ride. Your ride is with him and defeat if he has deceived you to believe that you should follow him. That's what he wanted in heaven when he got banished, before he got banished or banned from heaven. He was thrown out of heaven because he wanted the worship for himself. So if you're deceived in believing that he's offering you something, yeah, he could. He has some perks here on earth, but that'll be your final reward. What about your soul when you die? Is he going to give you anything then? Because he can't save you, can't rescue you. He can't give you anything else after you die. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whomsoever shall believe in him shall not die, but have eternal life. In other words, if you're born again, if you gave your life to Jesus, when we die, we actually really don't die. Technically, we just change location from this side of eternity to the other side of eternity, which is better and is with God forever and ever plus forever. It's amazing, right? Those are your two options, with God or without God. You have to find and establish all the borders of the earth, the division of the land and sea and of the nations. You have made summer and winter. Remember this, O Lord. The enemy has scoffed and a foolish and impious people have spurned your name. In other words, people who got their noses up at God and, you know, mock God, you know, you've met people like that. If not, praise the Lord. These people try to make you feel like you're like so inferior in thought and education and everything. They think they know it all. And even some people who, you know, claim Christianity, um, if you're a Christian and you say something, you voice your opinion, they come back at you and say, hey, you don't know it all. As if anybody as a Christian can say they know it all. No one knows it all except God. And that's very fair for us to say we don't know it all. And if somebody's going around saying that they do know it all, then, you know, they're saying they're God. And that's it's so obvious who's God and who's not. There's only one God. Verse 19. Oh, do not hand over the soul of your turtle dove to the wild beast. Do not forget the life of your afflicted forever. Consider the covenant you made with Abraham. And of course, you know, when we're going through some trials, I'm going to remind God of his promises over my life. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be like, wait a minute, you promised me this. And I don't see this happening. The promise that you gave me, I'm waiting for it. The question tonight is how long will we wait? You know, are we willing to wait on the promises? Are we willing to wait on God? Are we willing to wait on his word? Are we willing to wait on the fulfillment of his promise? Are we willing to wait for God? Because it's a free this system of, you know, free will, you know, you could turn away anytime you want. Now this whole idea of I'll turn away now and then at the very last second I'll repent and be with God. That's a uh, eternal Russian roulette, I call it. You're messing around. You're playing games with your eternity. You know, who says that at our last moment we're going to have strength or being even conscious to repent and turn to God? How about your your brain gets smashed in an auto accident, whatever, God forbid, and now your brain doesn't function. You can't put your thoughts together. So how are you even going to think through the process of repenting and turning to God in your last day, in your last seconds? That's a gamble that no one should be willing to take. That's a gamble for you, for your eternity. It's like I know people who live off of YouTube videos for all the information about spirituality, life, finances, relationship, uh, everything. Of course, movies, but I mean they use YouTube for everything in life. Uh, if something if something is said or viewed on YouTube that's against Christianity, they just jump on the bandwagon. And then make comments on social media, say, you see, and then send a link to the video. You see the, you know, this was created by aliens and then Christians found fragments and they put the fragments together. And that's how they created the Bible. All this stuff. People hang on to these so-called scholars or the so-called teachers on YouTube 
for everything instead of just going to the word of God themselves, which I'm telling you, the word of God is available around the world for free. And now you have the Bible apps and all that. You could literally go to the word yourself tonight and see if what you've been hearing about the scriptures is really true or not. Now, some people don't have time for that, right? They, you know, some people think that's a waste of their time. But let's look at time and eternity. And eternity, how you, how long do you think eternity is compared to the short life that we have here? Suddenly, it shouldn't matter to you if it takes you an hour, two hours, ten years to seek this out for yourself because eternity is waiting on the other end. This whole thing about you die and go to the ground and that's it, um, that would be a waste of everyone's time if just this was it. God came and showed us that there was another way. And Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father except through him or by him. Verse number 20. Consider the covenant you made with Abraham for the dark places uh, of the land are full of the habitations of violence. Let not the oppressed return dishonored. Let the afflicted and needy praise your name. Let the afflicted and needy praise your name. There's a secret there that if you feel oppressed, afflicted, rejected, now's the time for you to grab on to your secret weapon, the Lord Jesus, God, Yahweh, and right now, praise his name. The enemy gets so confused when you start praising God when he threw everything at you, the kitchen sink, everything. He threw health um, issues at you, finances, relationship that went bad, um, kids that are um, going buck wild right now. He's throwing all that at you and he's trying to get you to, you know, doubt God and all that. Now's your chance to rip out the, the secret weapon and praise God through that right now. So arise, O God, plead your own cause. Remember how the foolish man scoffs at you all day long. Verse 23, do not forget the clamoring voices of your adversaries, the uproar of those who rise against you, which ascends continually to your ears. So according to this scripture, Psalm 74, God is hearing these clamors. He's hearing these scoffers. He's hearing these praises. He's hearing these, uh, you know, deceptive ways of the enemy. He's hearing this every day. Now, how many times a day do you think, you know, God rules the whole entire universe, galaxy, everything. And on planet Earth, he decides to place us here and he's hearing all of this. You know, only a God of majesty, of power, of glory can hear all these messages, sort them out individually and send back answers and send and dispatch angels and fulfill his promises over this person, that person, fulfill his word and his promises over, you know, those who call upon his name, those who are are, are crying out to him because they're in some kind of despair, they some kind of trouble, some kind of trial they're getting hit by. So God is that good. The thing that's, that's mind boggling to me and even I, before I was th- before I was 30 years old, I didn't get this concept. So I was guilty of it. I was ignorant of this as well. But how easy would it have been for me to call upon God when I was doubting, call upon God when I was 15 and, and lost my dad instead of hating and being angry at God? I had an opportunity right then and there to question God about why my dad, instead of getting angry at God, and not opening up the conversation because I truly wasn't conversating with God. I was accusing him. I was scoffing and mocking him. I was angry at him, but I never gave him the opportunity to speak to me all the way till I was 30 years old. And I've done everything that the world said will give you this, that, and a third. I did you know, from A to Z, left me emptier than I was ever in my whole entire life. Then I remembered Hey, what about this God that everybody's talking about? Let me call him out one more time and see if he could change me. Drunk and high, I call out to God. I gave him some orders as if you could do that. It's just my testimony. And I told him, you better change me by the time I wake up tomorrow. Because if you don't, I'm going to keep it moving because there is no God. And then I'll just become my own God once again. And I would have saw the devastation of that. And I probably would have not been here sitting 
doing this podcast right now. But God changed me, transformed me, renewed me, and it continues to do that on a day-to-day basis. That's why I'm dedicated to this ministry. I'm dedicated um, to God, and I'm desperate for him, and I, I need him. And I know for sure if he could change me, he could change you, he could change anyone. So there is no really argument in my mind about the existence of God because God already exists in me and he proved himself to me. Now, if you need that proof in your life, call upon him, praise him, read Psalm 74 for yourself and look at what this psalmist is going through and see if you can relate because everybody says that the Bible is ancient, it's not relevant anymore. Uh, I read the whole Psalm 74 and you saw relevance there. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember, remember always that God is good. Peace.